Hello, my name is Kenny, and I've been working in this industry as a mobile developer for the past nine years. And at this point in my career, I built and deployed countless mobile apps, ranging from internal tools to public facing applications that are currently deployed on the App Store with over millions of downloads. Not only that, but I've witnessed an insane amount of trend shifts over the last nine years in the mobile space, and I have a very good idea of how this industry operates. With that being said, we're gonna do a deep dive into the state of mobile development in 2025 and discuss if it's still a good path to pursue. We're gonna answer the questions, is it still worth becoming a mobile developer in 2025? How competitive is the mobile job market? and how mobile has changed and the best way for you to break in. Now, I quickly want to mention that I've recently launched my four month mentorship program called DevLaunch. I've teamed up with two of the best software engineers that I know, Kevin Naughton Jr., an ex big tech software engineer, and Tech with Tim, an ex Microsoft engineer and a huge coding YouTuber. Together, we're gonna to work directly with you to help you achieve your software development career goals. So if that sounds interesting, make sure you click the link in the description to get signed up. Okay, so let's answer the question. Is it still worth becoming a mobile developer in 2025? And just like with everything in life, there is no black or white answer. The real question is, why are you considering mobile development? Is it for employment? Is it because you wanna build the next big app? Whatever the reason is, the most important thing to have is clarity. You have to have the bigger picture. Now let's be real, a lot of people would agree that the likelihood of building a successful app, putting it on the app store, and then getting thousands of downloads is way less likely today than let's say back in 2012. The app market overall is much more saturated, app discovery is much harder, and you're no longer just competing against random people deploying their app to the app store, you're competing against fully funded teams with insane marketing budgets. Not to mention there's a ton of data out there that suggests that people tend to not download new mobile apps, but rather stick to the ones that they currently have. But with all that being said, it still happens. It's just the success of your mobile app isn't about how well you code it, it's about how well you market it. I'm constantly seeing on Twitter and on YouTube, people building mobile applications, marketing them very well, and then getting great results. So it's not impossible. However, you need more than just the development skills to pull it off. Now, if your main goal isn't to build a viral mobile application, but instead you're focused on landing a mobile developer job, then I think that's a completely different story. And honestly, I still think it's a good career path to pursue, but with some caveats. In the past, you could totally get away with just a learning mobile development and calling it a day. But now in 2025, especially if you're a new developer on the scene, I think mobile development should be used as a way to supplement an already existing skill set. For example, let's say you're comfortable with web development and maybe you know React and JavaScript. A super smart way to stand out is to layer on React Native. And that's because you're already familiar with the ecosystem and that sort of lets you branch out into mobile development roles without completely starting from scratch. A lot of companies are actively hiring for React Native mobile roles and it's still a fairly niche space. And what I find interesting is that many front-end web developers with React experience either don't wanna to apply to these roles because mobile development, while similar on the surface, comes with its own different set of challenges. You have to account for platform specific issues. And generally speaking, you have to have a better understanding of performance related issues to building on devices with limited resources. Now, another thing to consider is that front end web dev is very competitive right now. But if you take a few months to learn React Native, you've suddenly opened up yourself to a whole new set of job listings. Because at the end of the day, mobile development is just another flavor of front end development. Now, React Native and front end development aside, maybe you're more of a back end developer experienced in, let's say, Java or Kotlin then I think learning native Android could be a great way to get into that front end mobile ecosystem while still staying in your lane. Because again, it's not a complete 180. You still have that foundational JVM language understanding. This is just a shift that sets you up for some more interesting job opportunities that blend backend experience with maybe mobile UI work. But let's explore the path of someone starting completely from scratch with no prior experience and trying to break into this industry through mobile development alone. And for those individuals, I would say it is going to be a lot harder. To do that, you would effectively have to build and ship multiple different mobile projects. You'd have to get them on the App Store, you'd have to document them, 
And you'd have to show that not only can you code, but you can take a product from idea to launch. And that's primarily because the amount of junior developer roles have decreased across the board. And unfortunately, mobile is no exception. So you're gonna really have to prove yourself if you want to break into this industry through the means of mobile dev. And that usually looks like building an app, deploying it, and then having metrics to prove that you can build comprehensive software that users wanna use. Now on the contrary, if you wanna learn how to program and build front-end UI-based applications, and the goal isn't to really get a job, I think mobile development could be a great and very fun place to start, especially with native development. And the reason for that is you'll learn a very popular language, either Kotlin or Swift, and you'll have pretty much everything you need all in one place to create software and deploy it to a client, i.e. your device. And unlike other traditional routes of learning, like through web development, where you need to learn HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React, Node.js, all to just get your project off the ground, with mobile development, you literally just need to download the necessary software, either Android Studio or Xcode, install a few packages, learn a single programming language, and then click the run button on your IDE. Okay, so now let's answer the question, is mobile development dying? Now the data does suggest that mobile development is dying, and I say that word very loosely, but it's dying in the same way that the amount of software development jobs as a whole has gone down significantly. And again, it's not just mobile, it's everything, right? There was a big boom back in 2020, 2021, and then there was a big bust. And as the saying goes, what goes up must come down. And dying is a pretty horrible word and admittingly pretty clickbaity because it implies a total collapse, which is totally just not the case. The reality is companies will still need people to maintain, to update, and to build out their mobile applications. Now, yes, the landscape of the mobile development space has become more competitive because of that bust, but in the same exact way that every other area of software development has become more competitive. And this problem isn't unique to mobile dev. Now, one thing that I will say, a trend that I've noticed throughout my entire career as a mobile developer, is that while there aren't nearly as many job openings as more traditional front-end web development based roles. The competition for the limited amount of mobile development roles seems much smaller. And I think that's because mobile dev tends to be much more niche. Mobile development typically isn't the first thing that people consider when they are thinking about breaking into this industry. And honestly, a lot of devs sort of avoid it. Now, finally, I wanna talk about how mobile development has changed as a whole and what you should do if you're trying to break in. And as I've already mentioned, I've witnessed a ton of trend shifts over the years. And when I was first getting into mobile development, the top cross-platform framework was something called Cordova. And it was just a JavaScript-based framework, basically just wrapped your entire mobile application inside of a web view. And it was very trash for anything beyond a super basic use case. It was fine if you needed to render some simple data and interact with that data, but anything more complex than that, you're going to run into a ton of problems very fast. And the only real way to make solid mobile apps back then was to build them natively, either with native Android using Java, or native iOS using Objective-C or Swift. And honestly, there was a pretty booming market for native mobile developers back then. And that's because companies weren't really messing around with the cross-platform stuff for the reasons that I've already mentioned, because cross-platform really just didn't hold up. If you wanted something that ran smooth, looked good, and didn't feel janky, pretty much your only option was to go native. But over the years, that trend has completely shifted. And that's because cross-platform solutions like React Native and Flutter have really stepped up in terms of community, ecosystem, and overall real world use case. And a lot of big companies are building legitimate applications with cross-platform technologies. Now the whole debate of whether you should use cross-platform like React Native or Flutter or native is sort of outside of the scope of this video and that's a much deeper conversation. But generally speaking, if you're trying to get into larger companies that care about the absolute optimal performance, and companies that can pay for developers to maintain two code bases could be a good idea to pursue that route. But if you're coming from more of a traditional web-based role, or if you're learning mobile development from the ground up with no prior coding experience, 
then honestly, I think your best bet is to start with cross-platform technologies like React Native or Flutter. You'll build for both iOS and Android in a single repository, and you can always dive deeper into those native concepts when the time comes. And the great thing is, if you do pick up on a cross-platform technology like React Native, you'll also pick up on core tools and languages like JavaScript, TypeScript, Node.js, and you'll gain experience with the broader React ecosystem, which is super duper valuable outside of mobile alone. Anyways, I hope that video was helpful. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask me in the comments. And if you're interested in joining my mentorship program, make sure you check out that link in the description. But other than that, I will see you all in the next one.